video, I will demonstrate a peek at our new feature in the J Deodorant plugin, the duplicate code refactoring visualization. As you may know, duplicate code, also known as clones, is considered the worst code smell out there because in the event that a change is needed to the functionality the code provides, multiple instances of the same code needs to be updated. This is not only time consuming, but if you miss one instance, you'll have all sorts of weird bugs that will be hard to track down. Our tool attacks the clones and refactors them, if possible, using a sophisticated mapping technique developed here at Concordia University in Montreal, which maximizes the number of match statements, minimizes the number of differences, and optimizes other discrepancies, for example, the positioning of if-else statements. I will demonstrate the use of this tool using code from a couple of famous open source projects, JFreeChart and Apache Ant. Currently, the tool assumes the user knows where the clones are, but in the near future, we will add the ability to import results from well-known clone detection tools. Let's look at some clone cases we found and the refactoring opportunities JDeodorant identifies. Our first case comes from JFreeChart and involves very similar code in two methods within the same class. These classes are in JFreeChart, the package org JFreeChart Axis. The class is called Axis, Date Axis, sorry, and the methods are called Refresh Ticks Horizontal and Refresh Ticks Vertical. Again, J, J Deodorant at the moment assumes that the user knows which methods are the clone are the clone methods. Uh, so we will manually click Refactor Duplicated Code and here is our side-by-side -side duplicate code visualization display. Now, our tool reconstructs the code using abstract syntax tree analysis, ignoring white space, formatting, and other non-significant differences. In the statements themselves, the tool recognizes a number of difference types and highlights them in yellow. We can hover over the differences for more information. The tooltip tells us what specifically the differences are and what type of differences they are. In this case, the differences consist mainly of constants, directional identifiers, which differ in each method. J Deodorant calls these variable name mismatches, as well as a, a couple of type compatible replacements, as we saw a moment ago. Type compatible replacement. Um, this is a type compatible replacement, is as it says in the description. The expressions have a different structure, but the same type. In this case, math.py and minus math.py have a different structure in abstract syntax tree language. Math.py is, is a qualified name, while minus math.py is a prefix expression. It, it happens to be a prefix expression with a qualified name inside, but a prefix expression is different than a qualified name, so we say it has a different structure but ultimately they're both doubles and of the same type. Um, we can continue scrolling and we will come across a red unmapped statement line. This line produces a precondition violation. This means that this violation will prevent us from refactoring the code. For example, when we try previewing the refactoring, we get a warning that does, prevents us from continuing. Uh, oops, sorry, I canceled. Let's go back to that. In this case, actually, we can see that the continue statement is not followed by any further statements. So essentially, it's useless. So we, we can actually manually go in and, and refactor it. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to refresh uh, ticks horizontal, scroll down, and let's comment out the continue statement. This will allow us to proceed with the refactoring. I'm clicking refactor duplicated code once again. And the precondition, the unmapped statement will no longer be there. And now we could continue with the refactoring. The solution in this case is relatively simple. Extract the duplicated code into a new method with parameters added for the differences. These are the differences. Remove the local variables, which no longer exist, and replace them with a new parameter. And then we call the extracted method from the old method, passing the difference as a parameter. We'll see this right now in the preview of the refactoring. 
The refactoring preview shows us what the refactoring will look like and what steps are being taken. On the top is a listing of all the actions being performed. In the bottom half of the screen, the left window shows what the code looks like now, and the right window displays what the code will look like after refactoring. We will delve more into the details of the refactoring preview shortly in the next case. Our next case also comes from JFreeChart in the package org JFree chart renderer category inside the classes line and shape renderer and scatter renderer. Now these are two sibling classes, meaning they both extend the same superclass. The methods that have been identified as clones are called get legend item in both of the classes. So let's select them and click refactor duplicated code. And now JDeodorant will build the model of the entire project and analyze it. Okay, once again, here is our side-by-side -side comparison of the two methods, analyzed based on their abstract syntax tree representations. The methods look hi highly similar, of course, with only the only differences being two unmapped statements and a couple of differences in the parameters of the legend item constructor call right here and here. Looking closely we notice that the two extra statements in the left window in the class line and shape renderer create boolean variables which are then used by the instantiation of the next in the next statement. On the right no such variables are created and as parameters literal values true and false are used. So let's take a look at this method call uh, in the in the first method, we're using shape visible, which is a boolean that was just created in the unmap statement. Uh, while on, on the other side, on the right side, uh, we're just passing true, which is a boolean literal. Th these appear as type compatible replacements because in AST, in abstract syntax tree uh, language, shape visible is a simple name, while true is a boolean literal. So they're different structures, but Ultimately, they are the same type, which is booleans. Let's take a look at JDeodorant's refactoring strategy by clicking Preview. According to the upper window, changes are being made to three areas. In the class, shape, line and shape renderer, in scatter renderer, and in a new class being created called intermediate abstract category item renderer. Those familiar with refactoring will realize that JDeodorant wants to perform an extract and pull up refactoring, which means it extracts the duplicate code from the clones and pulls it up to a new class that superclasses both those classes. Let's see this step by step. Line, line and shape renderer is modified in the following way. First, the superclass type is modified. So on the left here is what it was before it extended abstract category item renderer and after the refactoring it will extend this intermediate class. This field is needed in the method so it's pulled up to the super class. Same goes for this field and same goes for this field. And then finally in the legend in the get legend item method the body of the method which is the clone is pulled up to the new super class version of the method and instead inside this inside the method get legend item in the class line and shape renderer this is on the left we see what it looked like before and on the right all it all it becomes is a simple call to the new method in the superclass the same is happening in scatter renderer the, the superclass type is being modified the appropriate fields are being pulled up and the method get legend item itself is being reduced to just a simple call with true and false passed as parameters. Finally, a new intermediate class is created which extends the original superclass of both of both of the two classes and the body of the method get legend item is placed in here. And that is essentially And once we 
And once we verify and are okay with Jade Deodorant's uh, assessment, we can click OK and the refactoring is performed. Our next case comes from the Apache Ant project. We will navigate to the class inside the package org.apachetools.ant.taskdesk.optional.ejb to the class web, web sphere deployment tool and web logic deployment tool. The, me the methods, the duplicated methods that have been found are called is rebuild required in both of these classes. So let's click refactor duplicated code. And we now have our side by side view of the two clones. Um, if we examine some of the differences, we will see that we have a lot of variable name mismatches. This means that the variables in one method was sim were simply copied and renamed in the other method. So that's what most of the differences are. Uh, the exception being up here, these, the string literals are different in each method because they're performing different functions. So when they're written to the log, um, they're being passed a different string. And those show up as literal value mismatches because string literals, different values, literal value mismatch. So theoretically, this should be easy to refactor. We would just um, we would just pass these differences as parameters, the differences in strings as parameters, except if we scroll down, we see some statements highlighted in red. These are unmapped statements. Okay, and there are four of them. One, two, three, and four. Uh, if we hover over them, we will see that each one comes with a, a precondition violation, which means that these unmapped statements, as they currently stand, are preventing the clones from being refactorable. So let's take a closer look. In the first statement, string class name, we're creating this uh, object, the string class name, uh, cannot be moved before the extracted code because it accesses variables declared, sorry, declared in statements that will be extracted. So in other words, it cannot be moved before the extracted code we can't move this statement before the extracted code. Ordinarily, in order to account for unmapped statements in refactored code, we would move that statement outside the, ex the code that's to be extracted. And then after the statement appears, we would call the extracted code. In this case, though, we can't move the statement outside the extracted code because it uses generic entry, which is a variable that's created just a few lines up over here. Because this variable is local to the method, we can't move a statement outside this method if the statement uses something that was created inside the method. So that prevents us from being able to refactor. However, this is a special case. Inside, in this case, we kind of we can look carefully as a developer and see that the 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 portion, the only part of these two statements that are different is this extra dot replace call. And it really seems like the developer just forgot to make that call again in the other method. I mean, essentially they're doing the same thing. One of them is replacing the file separator with a period and the other one is separating a file separator and slashes, which is also the file separator. So in this case, we'll just manually go in and change that just to map up this, just to make this, just for the sake of ma making the statements match for the moment. So let's, uh, Let's find that over here. Okay, this is the the first class. Um, WebSphere deployment tool. We will copy that statement from right over here. And let's copy that over to the second instance right there. We'll save that. And now let's let's see the updated refactoring the updated visualization okay now if we scroll down we will see that there is no longer an unmapped statement in that place the statements are identical and therefore have been mapped scrolling down we see that there are two other unmapped statements and these are break statements break statements cannot 
be mapped if there's no corresponding break statement because it can ha have all sorts of effects on the logic of the algorithm. In this case, however, there are no statements following the break statement. So essentially, these two break statements are doing the same exact thing. One of them is inside an if is inside an if statement, and the other one is just outside this if statement, but at the end of an else statement, without any statements following it as well. So these two break statements do the exact same thing. So once again, we'll manually um, go in and fix this so that we can continue with the refactoring. So that is over here. Let's either we can move one outside or move the other one inside. It's it doesn't make a difference. Okay, and now let's refactor this again. Let's uh, see the visualization again, and there are no more unmapped statements, and everything else are just var variable name mismatches or literal value mismatches and everything can be refactored and we will continue by clicking preview and this is what J deodorant will wants to do for us so here's our class web logic deployment tool and we can preview the changes being made to it the superclass type is being changed to an intermediate superclass as once again J deodorant wants to do an extract and pull up uh, refactoring um, the same sort of thing in the next uh, it, it for the other class web sphere deployment tool and then the creation of a brand new intermediate class to contain all of the duplicated all of the clones and once we preview all this we can click OK to perform the refactoring and that's it our code now smells good <laughs>